Today I'd like to show you how I do one of my animations. I started this project during this crisis because all my jobs got cancelled and I had a lot of free time on my hands. To follow this tutorial you will need some basic knowledge of Adobe Photoshop as well as Adobe After Effects. I will show you what different layers I create in Photoshop and I will show you two different techniques to animate those in After Effects. The whole tutorial will only last for about 8 minutes, but if you'd like to see me animating the rest of the photo while speaking moderate English, please stick around until the end. So I opened up the photo in Photoshop. Here I take a look at which parts of the photo will be moving and what's visible behind them. For example, this box has to be replaced with an apple as well as the arm has to be extended behind her shoulder. I want to move the head as well and the waist has to be in front of the hand so I will need to cut that out as well. For cutting out the elements I use the pen tool and for replacing the background I use the stamp tool. On some rare occasions I also made use of the content aware fill tool. I linked some good tutorials in the description. I already created those layers for this photo, so I want to show you really quick what different layers I created. So here's the background, you can see it's very quick and dirty, but nobody really cares, the animation's only 4 seconds long, so that's fine with me. There's a shadow that separates the head from the neck, there's the head in normal position and there's the head in a painful position. Those elements, those facial elements, I just copied out of a stock photo I bought on the internet. Then there's the upper arm, there's the forearm, there's a layer called arm combined, which I only need to show you two different techniques to animate those layers in Adobe After Effects later. There's the shoulder, there's the hand, there's the apple, there's the thumb. And last but not least, the waist. So yeah, let's jump over to After Effects. So in Adobe After Effects I will create a new composition and use the same um, pixel settings as the photo. And then I will just import the PSD file I saved before. And I will use Composition Retain Layer Size and this will just import all the Photoshop layers into this folder as well as it will create a new composition with all the layers in it. So here I can toggle the visibility of, the, of my layers on and off and for the beginning I will just use the arm command layer. I'd like to show you the pop tool really quick. So at the position of at the, the wrist and the elbow and the shoulder, I will create three advanced pins. And in between I will create starch pins. And then I can go and um, go like to one second or so. And I can start animating those those pins on this layer and you will see how this stuff will bend and everything will become really bendy. So just like this, this looks fine and, and just like that she will start lifting her arm up and down. So for the animation of the arm with the anchor point method I will delete the arm combined layer and then I will use the anchor point tool from up here and for the forearm I will move it to the elbow and for the upper arm I will move the anchor point to the shoulder. Now I will also use this technique for the hand as well as for the apple. No, that's actually that's fine. Thumb, I don't want to move that anyway. And ways I can make visible again as well. So now I need to like attach the forearm to the upper arm. So I need to parent the forearm to the upper arm with the lasso tool. I need to parent the hand to the forearm. 
I need to parent the thumb to the hand. My first position will be the apple behind the waist. So I use the upper arm and I see I made a little mistake in Photoshop. There's a little bit of the upper arm visible behind the shoulder of the woman. So I will just move everything a little bit down. Yeah, that's, yeah, that will work. And now if I rotate, I will start keyframing and f my first posi position should be something like that. Yep. And the forearm as well, maybe a little bit more bent down, like that. Maybe even go a little bit further. Yes. I will hide the apple layer now because I just want to have her arm movement animated right now. So that will be my starting point. Now, I would say it would take her around a second or so to move her arm behind her back and so the apple becomes visible there. So I will go to the one second mark here and I will animate everything down. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that will work. So you can see now the animation, how she moves her arm from behind the waist. Okay, that's all there is to animating these stories. It's all just keyframe and rotation and position. Try and error is also a big part. I hope you liked the tutorial and if you create one, I'd like to have a look. My Instagram handle is in the description. If you'd like to see me animating the rest, just stick around. Welcome back. Now I will animate within like 10 frames. Her arm will quickly move up. And also I don't want the waist to be visible right now. So her arm is now in front of the waist. I will, the arm will quickly move up and then it will all, the apple will be thrown into the air. Uh, maybe a little bit quicker. And also I do often I often do the movements myself so I can see how my arm moves and what I need to animate. Like, maybe like this. This is where Yeah that that looks fine to me. Now for the ways I just go and say like Right about here, the waist won't be necessary anymore. So I will just zoom out here and make it invisible or non-existent. So you can see, the arm comes from behind the waist, the waist becomes invisible and now the arm goes in front of the waist. Also, the head is a, the layer group is pre, is pre comped so I don't want her painful face right now. I just want her normal face. So I will push this back to around three seconds. I will come back to this later. So here's her normal face, and then the apple gets thrown in the air. Now for the hand, it will be moving down ever so slowly, let's say around two seconds, and there it will be going back to its start position. Yeah. Nope. Sometimes this stuff just makes me sick, but yeah, like this, now it moves back. Hardly any change, so that's fine. Now for the apple, I will 
animate the apple by hand. So I just make the ways invisible for now and make the apple visible. And I will just use the position keyframes for this. I will go here and say this is my starting position. Then at one second it will be moving towards here. Yeah, that's fine. And then here we'll be moving up again towards here. And sometimes those those animations can look very unnatural because the keyframe interpolation is wrong. And then I will just create here at the spatial interpol interpolation what a, what a word I will change it to linear so yeah that looks fine to me now I want to animate this to hit her head at around the two second mark so we'll go over And say yeah that's the head and now you can see how unnatural this looks because it doesn't get thrown up in the air so just in the middle I will put this apple up out of the frame and maybe here I will change the spatial curve of animation just ever so slightly so it looks a little bit more natural. So you can see now the apple gets thrown up, it leaves the frame and enters the frame, hits her head at the two second mark and now it will fall down. Maybe, let's see how this looks in real time. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little bit faster everything. So I will move it towards start a little bit more so it gets faster. Yeah, that looks fun. Now I can animate like at the two second mark it will be actually already at the floor. Like here. Oh no. You can see how, where, the, where the apple will be each frame with represented by the small little dots. So it's recommended to use the same kind of distance between each dot because that's actually the speed. And I want the apple to move the frame completely and also it should be jumping a little bit over here, more over here. Also here I can change the spatial curve a little bit so it will be looking like this but here I will change this to like it hits her head like this then it will be moving up again it just falls down right next to her face also I still think it's a little bit too fast probably if I look at the points so we'll move the keyframe accordingly let's have a look ooh that's a little bit fast there So maybe don't use this kind of graph stuff because the speed stays the same and rather use another no and rather use another keyframe. Here it will be moving up again just ever so slightly. And it will be jumping something like this, so it will be slow. Then it will fall down fast. Yeah, that looks looks okay. In the end, it's all just eyeballing and testing stuff out, and yeah, it's all I, I do.
Yeah, that looks all right. Now for the for the face to for the head to move down a little bit, I will where the apple hits, it will hit right here. So the head will move. I will change the position a little bit down. Maybe start yeah here. Go a little bit down, just not too far. And then also I look at the time and I see it's at 125. And also I will change her face to the painful face at the keyframe at 123. Yeah, that's okay. So that looks that looks all right to me. Also, if I want to to um, to change everything so it can loop, I could use I could duplicate the waist layer. Or not, I could I will do that now. I will duplicate the waist layer, and then I will say, just right here, all this the fun stuff has ended. So I would like to have everything back to normal at this position. Let's move this a little bit further down because we're in a 20 in a 30 frame base. So let's do this animation two and a half seconds long. So now for the face, I will just use this keyframe and paste it here and then I will use this keyframe and paste it a little bit further down so it will make actually will make a little bit of pause in this in this painful position and then it will go back to normal for the last for the last frame. Also during going up at one at two seconds and ten frames I will change the head back to normal so like this all right yeah that looks good now for the waist also it should become uh, visible again as soon as her hand goes back to the to the position again which actually means I need to to change her arm a little bit more so that's like her forearm and her normal her upper arm not her normal arm will need to go back to this position at two and a half seconds and in between it should go back to a position where it was before like this position so we'll copy this one move it over to maybe two seconds this one for the upper arm as well and just right here I will make the copy of the waist visible and I will really quick just change the whole change the whole um, timeline to 2 seconds and 15 frames and now we can take a look at the animation and it looks like she will take she has an endless supply of apples behind her waist so that's that's funny yeah and that's more or less how I go about all those different animations so you see it's fairly simple to be honest, the part in Photoshop is the most time consuming thing ever. It takes me up to four to six hours to, to just replace all the background elements, depending on how complicated it looks. And then the animation stuff is most of the time very, fairly quickly done. So that's it. If you create one of the animations for yourself, Feel free to send them over to me, I will fade in my Instagram handle and have fun!